welcome to chapter two of this video series called Don't Fear the Horn. In this video, we're going to be looking at how brass instruments all work in similar ways. Of course, there's subtle differences between all the members of the brass family. Maybe not so subtle in the case of the trombone. <laughs> the technique of how they're played generally changes according to the size of the instrument and the corresponding size of the mouthpiece. We're going to see if the French horn fits into this general pattern of brass instruments. So I've devised 13 brass rules and we're going to see which instruments are the goody two-shoes and follow the law exactly and which are the instruments that are the mavericks and live on the edge of civilised society. Rule one. There is a standard key, instrument length, for beginners. This is slightly controversial because you could start a small trombonist on an alto trombone pitched in E-flat rather than the B-flat tenor. You could also start a larger tuba pupil on a B-flat instrument rather than an E-flat. But on the French horn, you could start a beginner of any shape or size on either of the two keys of instrument, F or B-flat. Rule two. Standard versions of instruments are in B-flat or E-flat. Again, the tuba could be the exception to this rule, as instruments can be pitched in F or C, but generally these are only played at a more advanced level. The standard versions of French horns are in the keys of B-flat, but also in F. Rule 3. In the treble clef, music for beginners, is written in the key of the instrument. Now, of course, trumpet players can play an instrument in a different key from the written music, but generally this is only at a more advanced level. On the French horn, music is written in the key of the instrument on the F horn, but on the B flat horn, the music is still in F. Rule four. In the treble clef, middle C is the second harmonic. The first harmonic being the fundamental or pedal note one octave below. This is not true on the French horn. On the F horn, it's the fourth harmonic, and on the B flat horn, it's the third. Rule five, you move the vowels with your right hand. The trigger on the trombone is played with the left hand, as are most fourth vowels of tubas and euphoniums. But the main three vowels are always played with the right hand, except on the French horn where they're played with the left hand. Rule six, you only put your hand in the bell for wah-wah effects. Not on the French horn, you always have your hand in the bell. Rule seven, when music is in bass clef, it's always in concert pitch. I have heard of teaching methods on the trombone, euphonium or sousaphone that use a kind of transposed bass clef. But this is quite a rare thing to do. On the French horn, however, when the music is in bass clef, it is still in the key of F. Rule eight, instruments only have one set of vowel slides. While compensating tubers and euphoniums have a second set of vowel loops, but generally only the third loop is a movable slide. But on the French horn, double horns have two sets of slides and triple horns even have three. Rule nine, Fourth valves on instruments are generally only used for the low and pedal registers. This is not true on the French horn. The fourth valve on the double horn, usually moving the instrument into B flat, is used throughout the range. Rule 10, the bell points forwards or up. Not on the French horn. It points backwards, downwards and sideways. Rule 11, the longer the instrument, the bigger the mouthpiece. This is not true on the French horn. The French horn is longer than a trombone or euphonium, but the mouthpiece is much smaller. Rule 12, the mouthpiece is cup-shaped. Not on the French horn, the mouthpiece is conical. Rule 13, piston valves are by far the most common type when there's a set of three valves. So you can get rotary valved trumpets, flugelhorns, euphoniums and tubers, which are common in certain regions, but piston valves dominate worldwide. 
On the French horn, however, rotary valves are the predominant type in modern horns. So there are the 13 brass rules. And I think we found that unlike the very compliant trumpet, trombone or tuba, the French horn is just a naughty troublemaker. But all is not lost. As soon as we start to understand the differences, we can then start to think about the challenges that face us when dealing with the French horn in a logical way. And we'll start that in the next chapter when we look at different types of French horn. But for now, please like, comment and subscribe to this channel. If you click on the bell icon below, you'll receive notifications every time we release a new video. So I look forward to seeing you in chapter three, but for now, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.